What's up, YouTube? I'm Brandon Carroll, and I'm joined today by Mike Chambers. How you doing, Mike? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on your show, Brandon. Thanks for being here. Now, Mike, you are a AI ML specialist. I know you're a developer advocate, but... Yep. <laughs> it always <laughs> and, seems that way. <laughs> and, and your picture's on the screen. Yes. That's me. <laughs> yes. That's Mike. So uh, today in our video, we're going to be talking about generative AI and using it as a tool for cybersecurity learning, because I've been reading a lot about this lately and people are using it because I think of the interactivity. And so being the specialist you are in large language models and how they can be used and where they can benefit us, I thought it would be interesting to talk to you about it to see you know, what your thoughts are on using it as a tool and kind of how it all works. Sure. So let's just start with that. What are your thoughts on using generative AI and large language models as a learning tool? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think they could be very powerful to be used as a learning tool to be able to, especially with chatbots, right? You can go to chatbots and you can say, just help me understand some concepts. Um, but I think at the same time as you're using them, it's just, as long as you understand what they are. So they're, um, they're, they're large language models, they have a reasonable understanding of language, um, but where's it getting its data from? So as long as yeah. you sort of like have all of these pieces aligned in your mind, then yeah, yeah, I think they can be a pretty powerful tool. Yeah, okay, so let's just start from the beginning on this and sort of lay it out there because I, I've used ChatGPT to ask questions and get answers back and I think it's pretty interesting, but I know that I'm interacting with something else. That's a chat bot on mm -hmm. the, the front end what do we, when we're, when we're using generative AI as a learning tool, what am I interacting with on the back end? Yeah, absolutely. So, so well, what you're not interacting with is a search engine which is showing you results from the internet necessarily. It might look a lot like that, but that's not really what's happening. So um, large language models, which are the generative AI language models which power things like ChatGPT and other chatbots, they have been trained on masses amounts of text, masses amounts of language. So initially, they start out and they really can't do anything at all. Then you start to push data in, you start to push language in. So all of the pages of Wikipedia, everything that we can scrape from the internet, typically is what we'll find, is put into these models. And they use that to start to learn about language and how language is constructed. And then we keep training them and we keep going and they get bigger and they start to understand some ideas about the world, like the way yeah. things work. And then we keep adding information and we keep adding more stuff in, they get even bigger, and then they start to exhibit some of the properties that we can see, which are the amaz amazing emergent properties of being able to properly answer the questions that you have. So in a nutshell, um, it's taken all of this training data, it's codified it, codified it. it's yeah. got the statistical relationships between words, yeah. and it can do a reasonably good job at approximating that it knows what it's talking about. Okay, okay, so that sounds pretty cool, and it sounds like it's, it knows a lot, or it can figure out a lot, I guess is what I heard. Um, so what I did hear also from that is that you feed data into it, so like, for example, if somebody wrote a blog post about a cyber attack and how to mitigate against it today, um, that wouldn't necessarily be in there until it's been given that data, is that right? That, that's absolutely right, yeah. So training large language models, tra training generative AI models is a huge undertaking. So um, large amounts of compute, long periods of time, and actually it's quite costly to do. So these foundation models are created um, and they are trained at a point in time. And it's whatever data was chosen by the developers, and obviously they couldn't choose future data because that's not a thing that we figured out how to do yet. So they take <laughs> right. all of that data that they've got at that point in time that they want to use and they train the model on that. So yeah, it's not going to know about something typically which happened yesterday unless we start to augment it and uh, build it into a different kind of application. Gotcha. Okay, so it sounds like if we were to want to learn something that was related to like a certification, and the certification has been around for a little while, odds are that the model will probably have that data in there and I'm getting some pretty good information back from it. That's quite possible, yes. I mean, okay. we need to also check and make sure, don't necessarily completely rely on the information coming from it, but yes, if it's, uh, if it, yeah, like you say, certification, lots of people write lots of things about certification, so likely it is likely that it knows quite a lot about that. Okay, and if I am using it to learn, 
I think that cybersecurity is a really important area of Absolutely. IT and, and, and working in tech. And so obviously the information that I'm getting back, I want it to be the most accurate that it, it can be. Is that ever an issue when we're working with these models? Sure. So um, again, so it's understanding how what the model's doing. So it's got all of that understanding of language. Now, when you go and ask it a question, what you're doing is you're prompting the model. So you're constructing a prompt um, and you're sending that in. All that model's actually doing, and I, th I actually find this fascinating and, and super, super exciting. All it's actually doing is predicting what the next word might be. And then it will predict what the next word might be, and then on and on and on it goes. So if you're used to like using some chatbots, for example, and you see that a generation comes up word at a time, that's not like a special effect that it's doing to make it feel like it's typing. It's actually figuring out word after word after word and what what the uh, what the output might be. Yeah. So it's really uh, performing a mathematical operation, a statistical operation to think what likely is the next word that I need to show. And so in some circumstances, it might just show you something that feels reasonable rather than is actually correct. Okay. People call these hallucinations. It's a little bit unfair. Really, it's just an accuracy problem. Back in mm -hmm. the old days of machine learning, as far back as like last year, we, yeah. we'd be training like an image classification model. And if mm -hmm. it said this is a dog when actually it's a cat, we'd say that's a, a, an accuracy problem. And that's yeah. exactly what we're talking about here as well. So again, it's a machine learning model. It's okay. not your friend necessarily, okay. I suppose it could be. Um, <laughs> so just be aware that it's yeah. using mathematics to try and figure out what to say next. Okay, so I guess moral of the story is, could be used as a, as a tool to maybe augment your learning, to, to add to your learning. Um, you're still gonna wanna find avenues that are gonna get you the latest and greatest when it comes to cybersecurity threats and, and things like that. But um, there's a lot more that you can do with this than just ask it questions and get answers and learn from it. Absolutely, and there are definitely ways that you can augment it, build it into larger applications, and then start to get some authoritative truth from it as well. So there are things you can do. Okay. Well, hey, this has been great talking about using generative AI for, for learning about cybersecurity. But before we go, Mike, where can our audience go for, for more information to learn more about generative AI? Absolutely. Well, um, on the screen here, we've got the uh, AWS community space, so community.aws. And if you go forward slash generative AI, you get to this page. And yes, that's a picture of me. Um, but we have lots of content up here about generative AI, including the course that we've put together about large language models. Awesome. Thanks again for being here and giving us your insights. We're going to actually talk in another video about some of the things that you can do when it comes to cybersecurity with generative AI and maybe what some of the possibilities are. So tune in for that video. If you've liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel so that you can uh, see more videos just like this one. And Mike, thanks for being here with me today. Really appreciate your insight on this. Thank you very much.